A room flooded with afternoon sunlight and tucked away near the kitchen was the perfect space for our dining room, a place to dine, gather, and my occasional office. I'm excited to make over this space as we prepare to move in and finally call the cottage our home. Hello guys, and welcome back to the cottage and welcome to our dining room. And a big thank you to Etsy for sponsoring today's video. I love shopping on Etsy for vintage, unique finds, handmade finds that you just can't get at the stores. But more on that later because I got some amazing pieces for this space. We used this front room because it has great sunset light streaming in and it was the front of the house in that kind of like T-shape of the house sticking out for the dining room was just gonna be the perfect place. I also love to work at the dining room table. I just love to be amongst the house, not tucked away in a room in an office. I figured we can start the dining room makeover so that when we move in next week, <laughs> officially next week, I have a place that I can work at and sit, we can eat, it can feel a little more comfortable. I have already done two major projects in this space. I have added beadboard, Romeo and I actually added all salvaged beadboard to the ceiling to continue the look from the kitchen into the space so that it was all one cohesive area. And I have already painted it in gray mist, which is an accent color we used on the exterior of the house, but I also wanted to bring it inside the house because I just thought it was a really creamy, it has like a cream to it and I just, I love the color for the ceiling. So we've already done that. I have also already patched all of the wainscoting in here. If you guys remember this room, we did not used to have two windows here. It was one window and it felt dark. I felt like it didn't, it wasn't working with the outside of the house. We had an extra salvaged window when I was moving things around. It was just how it was always supposed to be. So we've already made a lot of updates in this space. Now it's time to bring it to life. And our first project is to trim out the windows. This trim is already here. We need a little bit of trim for the window over here and then all of the trim for this area and the window sill. So we're back here in the shed where I've kept all of our salvaged pieces from the house. Um, and I have ordered matching pieces, cut knives to have the same profile so that we can really have the entire house exactly the same as the original house. So we are using every bit of salvaged pieces uh, from the original house. And a lot of them are different sizes, so I always have to figure out, like look at this, this is totally not the same size. <laughs> may have picked up on the fact that our sheetrock sits out further than our wainscoting. That's because they didn't have sheetrock when this house was built. So the original house was wainscoting on the bottom and then shiplap with wallpaper on it. At some point in the last couple of decades, they added sheetrock. I don't know when sheetrock was invented, but then when, when they did that, they had that. But when we bought the house, what they had was this trim and it has a little notch out of it here that's the, the thickness of the sheetrock. And they put that 
like that. I think it might be a chair railing or a chair molding, something like that, because it sits chair height. We left the shiplap, the original house, and then we put sheetrock on top of that. We're gonna be putting this trim, and I have a whole bunch of it that Romeo just took the nails out of. Now we have a blank slate. We spent all last night caulking and priming the walls, the trim, the baseboards, all of the things. I ran out of caulk up in about this area. So I can't express to you guys. Now, I'm a crazy person when it comes to caulking. Let me show you what it looks like if you don't know. It comes in these little tubes. You need a gun, a caulk gun to use it. You cut it open and it is your best friend. I can't express how much better things look <laughs> when they're caulked. I need to finish this area with caulk and we need to talk about paint colors. Because it's open concept from the kitchen and the back door area into this dining room space and there wasn't really a definitive break in the space, I didn't want to do anything totally different than the kitchen. There's no break. Like you kind of have to paint the walls the same color. So because we chose to paint the cabinetry and also the coffee bar, Pajmina, I was thinking that it might be nice to paint the, all the wainscoting, so all along the bottom, all the baseboards, so the lower part of the room, and around the trim of the window, Pajmina. I'm thinking that it will continue that color into this space and it's a really pretty color. I'm really obsessed with it right now, um, and I really like how it came out in the, in the coffee pantry. So I'm thinking that it's gonna tie the space together. Then I was thinking, okay, for the walls, what do we do? I definitely want the walls in here a lighter color. Thinking that I wanna continue the gray mist from the ceiling down onto the crown molding and down to pashmina color. So we're doing gray mist and pashmina in here. It is a softer, more neutral kind of palette, but I think it's going to lay the groundwork for a really pretty calming space that's not pure white. So, caulking, painting, let it commence. Then, then we can decorate and hang my pretty life. And I still haven't shown it yet. I think we made the right choice on the color palette. I think it's calm. And that's the word I wanted to use to describe every room in the house. Calm, welcoming, inviting, but overall calm. It definitely needs another coat, but I think we can move on to other things like hanging the light. <laughs> but I've had for months. I have been collecting things to use to decorate this space as this is the official first space that's actually going to be decorated. I know we've been working on the guest bathroom, but I haven't actually decorated it yet. It's just the pieces, the foundation, the tub, the faucets. You guys know I love to find stuff on Etsy, whether it's handmade, handmade ceramics, handmade linen napkin holders, or just unique pieces. I sometimes find vintage pieces as well. I love that I can support small makers from all around the world. You guys can tap the link in the description to shop all of my Etsy favorites, including all of the pieces that I'm using today in this makeover. I even got this lamp. I'm really excited. I got some brass little candle holders that are a little more Scandinavian. I love to mix design elements. I love to mix styles, but overall keeping a very calming, natural palette. But look at this. You guys, she hasn't been a brat since I brought her home. 
pretty. <laughs> it has ribbed glass and brass that matches everything else that we're doing. So I'm thinking that we can put her up. Finally. Okay, power is off. Found my wire strippers that I was looking for the other day. <laughs> Let's hope I do this one right. Cause I installed the outside light and then thought I failed and the breakers were turned off. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so nervous. Look, mom, I'm an electrician now. I see that. Yeah, I have an electrician on speed dial though. <laughs> <Very>. <laughs> okay, I need the ground now. Okay, right across their fingers. actually a little bigger than eight by 10, didn't he say? Eight and a half by 11 and a half, maybe? Yeah. It was gonna fit, it fits perfectly in this in this dining room. And this one is for hardwoods too, so you just gotta put it down the right way. Yeah, we vacuum it. It's the vacuum that we don't own. <laughs> Yes. Do you see these interesting veins of color in the rug? I thought it was so pretty. And then it had like the more neutrals here that paired really nicely with the pashmina. I thought it was perfect. And look at the size. I mean, it's perfect for the space. I've been looking for dining room tables for a really long time. And like I, I said, I was only gonna buy one if it was vintage, possibly French, because our chairs are French provincial, which we'll bring into. I found her. Uh, and I, I was gonna make one, but I found her at the last minute and I think she's perfect, other than the fact that she's a little too tall, which we will take care of later. Wait. You guys, this is our dining table and she's really old. Center it for some Okay, left. this way, yeah. <laughs> you guys, she's wonderful. Now I also got some wax for her that'll just give her a nice luster, which I'm gonna do on her, but I am obsessed with this. It's from France. <laughs> it has dovetail knots in the center. It's all put together by pegs. They don't do that anymore. I love the legs. I love this drawer. A little too tall. She is 32-ish inches normally. Dining tables are 29 to 30 inches, so she sits a little tall, but she had this drawer and I really liked it. And the height is fixable. We could cut down the legs a little bit, which is an option, but I am not in the mood to cut this table right now. I need to really sit with it, see if I can take some height off of it from the top or somewhere. I just, I need, I need, I need to live with the table as is for my emotional attachment to settle in and then, and then we'll, we'll change some things. But I love the size. It was a perfect size. It seats eight. We have our dining chairs, our French provincial dining chairs. Here's one. My mom and I had a lot of discussions about the sizing, the sizing of the chair to the sizing of the table and the size of the table at its height makes the chair look miniature like it makes it look a little small um so i definitely want to put pads on the chairs and or little cap ends so that will raise these up 
And then if I lower the table two inches, it'll help to balance that out. So for now, it's gonna feel a little, the scale is gonna feel a little off, I feel like. Found these French Provincial dining chairs at an antique mall. Absolutely loved them. I didn't think that I wanted to do cane in here in the house. And when I saw these, I just fell in love with everything about them. The color of the, the velvet, the, that they were in excellent shape. I got a set of eight chairs. They ended up being less than $100 a chair, which is incredible. So this is the wax that they recommended when I got the table. The natural wax cleans, stains, and polishes. And they recommended the light brown color. I think it comes like clear, light brown, and dark brown. They said the color was very subtle because I was like, I don't want to change the color, but I do want to like luster it up. Ooh. It goes on so smooth. I mean, this is a light brown table, so the color is definitely not changing it any, so I think this is gonna be great. And it does have like a luster. It's also really fast drying, so. She described it as kind of like a moisturizer and it really is soaking it all up, which is good has like some life to it. The little girl was thirsty. Okay, so Romeo cleaned these up for us. Steamed the cushions. Just cleaning all the wood. It's definitely a mission to find a table I like that also sat eight. Oh my gosh, you guys, it's, it's so pretty. I feel like I was nervous about the lightness of the color palette that we were going with on the wall with the rug, but this brought in, and I knew the chairs would bring in a lot of depth. So still all neutral, but this offers a little more mood, you know, and with the light and, uh, I am a sucker for linens. So I, I got some of these from Etsy. This is from a company called Thing Stories. I got a linen, to two actually, to test. I got a linen table runner that's like this herringbone. It's very light. The herringbone's very, very subtle. It's almost like chevron actually. This is chevron, herringbone, chevron, one of those. It's very, very subtle if you can see. Um, so I got that with the matching napkins. And then I also got the natural color. So I believe this table runner is 16 inches wide and 100-ish long, because we have a long table. This is a 90-inch table. I also got these handmade knotted napkin holders for them. I thought that that was a pretty palette. These are from Sunday Studio. I thought they were so cool, and it offered the clay color. My colors are more earth tones and jewel tones anyways. That's kind of how I like to pair them. How I like to do my napkins is I literally just grab it in the center, pinch it, and then kind of let it fall like that. There's a lot of fancy ways to do napkins, clearly. But then I'm gonna take one of these and just slide it on top. Oh, that was so nice. So pretty. So I bought this piece a long time ago <laughs> for someplace different and it wasn't gonna work. So I was thinking we could change out these panels to glass and it would be kind of like a china cabinet. So the, the window on this side is like shifted down. It's not directly across from the other window. So it has, we have some space here. Do we like it? Does it feel short? <laughs> Our ceilings are so high. I definitely think that this could be a DIY project. Um, we need to do some things to it. I would love to take this inside panel out and replace it with glass. I feel like that would be really pretty. And then you would be able to see inside and it's real rich toned inside. And I can have some pretty things. Your home is a work in progress. You have to put things places, see if you like them, see if you don't, live with them for a little bit. I'm gonna live with that for a little bit. But let me know what you think. We can always put something up top. <gasps> I'm sitting at my dining table, you guys. Look at all these people I can have here. It's wild. Um, so we need some art. Obviously, there's we've got a lot of furniture and no 
like art on the walls. Love Etsy for prints. This is a, a print of maybe an original. I thought it was really pretty. I mean, just abstract, neutral. And I love getting prints on Etsy because you can put them in your own frames. You know I'm always finding frames. And if you caught one of my recent vlogs, you saw me pick up this beauty. I need to clean her up a little bit. Her only problem is right here on the top corner um she's she's lost her filigree her design and i really want to do a diy it's just been intimidating i haven't tried it out yet i have all the stuff to do it to make a resin mold replicate a piece from another corner or something to put there um, but i do have some colors that we can just paint this silver part so that it looks complete and we clean it up and i just need to slim the print down just a little bit that's the great thing about prints. They come in a size. Some of my frames are a little odd shaped, um, you know, but that's the great thing about prints is that you can cut them down or have them printed at a specific size that you want them. Toothbrushes come in really handy to clean the filigree on frames, just saying. So I have these cleaning toothbrushes that I use and she's cleaning up really well. I mean, she's just dirty, really but I like all the patina on the gold. First hole in the wall. It's on a string, like a wire. See how it's hanging? I think I'm gonna have to hang it differently. <laughs> so I did a little foraging outside <laughs> and rummaged for it. My mom brought me this vase. Because everything of mine is still packed up. Um, but this is a great way to add some height here, I thought. We could keep adding foraged vines or flowers or something. I feel like it added so much height. So just a little bit of purple because I've got some yellow happening in the space. I felt like that could be kind of pretty. What do you think? I also got some other amazing things. This is so pretty. This is an egg holder. And I thought it would be beautiful in the refrigerator that we don't have yet, but in the refrigerator. <laughs> And I showed you these brass taper candle holders. I picked up some, just some simple tapers for them. I was kind of looking for like a deep kind of taupe color. They didn't have any, so I'm hoping that this color works out. I love how simple these are. These are from Raw Adorn Studio. Big conversation we need to have. We need to have serious discussions about that. 
I think yes, but then I'm like, which ones? <laughs> it's a whole conversation. I think we're gonna tackle the window treatments when we do the living room. And then whatever we decide on the living room, it'll kind of trickle into the rest of the house. I feel like that's the best maneuver since we're still working on a lot of stuff in the house construction wise, it makes sense to leave them off for now. If you guys enjoyed this video, I love all of the amazing finds that I got from Etsy. Again, thank you to Etsy for sponsoring today's video. Check out all of the amazing things that they have on their website. I look all the time for unique things um, to decorate my house, like, like the knobs that I got for the vanity makeover in the guest bathroom. I got those on Etsy. I always find some amazing pieces. So check them out. It really, really does feel like makeover season now. Like it feels like officially makeover season. If you've missed any of the recent renovation videos, I have full playlists of each room, the renovation as a whole here on my channel. So you guys can check out and binge watch them and catch up because we are moving back into the guest bathroom. We're getting our countertops. We're moving in. <laughs> We're doing things you're not gonna wanna miss them. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification so you know exactly when I upload here and also over on my vlog channel every week. And I will see you guys again very, very soon. Bye guys. <laughs> A dirt dauber flew into his pants. What? A dirt dauber flew into his pants. I was wearing shorts. <laughs>